Welcome everyone. A warm greetings from Medionix. Uh, we have our host uh, Aditya Dua, uh, who, who is an expert in uh, React and has an experience of, of about six years in enterprise grade applications. And he has uh, many more experiences in uh, JavaScript frameworks, then JavaScript, Java, Spring, and he, he is more of an expert in web development. So I would request uh, Aditya to, uh, to take the meeting ahead, to take the se uh, session ahead and, uh, and uh, begin with the session today. Uh, thanks, Ranjita. Thanks for, uh, thanks for giving this opportunity. And welcome, everyone. So uh, can we start? Ranjita, can you help me with the rights for sharing? Please? Yes, just give me a moment. In China? Uh, okay. Okay, guys, are you able to see my screen? Okay, so guys, uh, before we begin this webinar, let's set the ground rules. Uh, we will try to make this webinar, this session, as interactive as can. You are feel, you know, you should feel free to ask any question you have in mind. Let it be, you know, uh, in the in the context of the session or somewhere near in the web development. I would be more than happy to answer it, right? So my voice is clear, right? Everyone, just yes or no. Anything is fine. It's, uh, it's very clear, Aditya. You can. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. So, uh, before uh, before beginning, in you know, uh, 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 thanks to all of you for taking out time from uh, from uh, from a weekend and you know joining in this session. So, this session is all about web development with React. Now, uh, before we begin the session, let me say, uh, let me take you through the content which we plan to cover in this brief one and a half hour of the session. So, we'll be starting with the React JS. Uh, how many of you have heard of React JS, guys? Yes, guys. How many of you have heard of React JS? Okay, uh, okay, Mahidhar, I got a question. I'll I'll make sure I answer it. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Zara, you will be able to have some understanding of uh, React post this session. If you have any basics of uh, vanilla JavaScript in hand, that would be a lot of a lot helpful to you. Okay, heard. Basic level, great, great. Okay, Vue JS, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, now, so this is all about React. So what is React? We'll be, we're going to see it. Then, you know, we get a very, a very famous question like, what is when to use React Web and when to use React Native? A very important question, which most of us have encountered, right? So we'll be taking you uh, through this question and we'll be going further. Then the magic, why is React such a popular library? Just if you guys uh, don't know, or if, you, if you're unaware about it, React is a library which has over one lakh stars on the GitHub repository, right? So there is something in the library which is attracting people a lot, right? So we'll be discussing mm -hmm. about the magic, the features of the React uh, library. Next is components. So when I talk about React, the basic thing of React is components. So I think, you know, all those people who were, who were curious about the basics understanding of React, this is something very important for you. If you have got the knowledge of components correct, trust me, you have got the basics or the building block of the React up and working. Okay. Then we have hooks. So hooks are something uh, advanced concepts of React. We'll be seeing along th those as well. And then we'll be making a small demo, a small example of a to-do list. So guys, are we all ready to start a small introduction to React application development? Okay, perfect. So, okay. Now, before we uh, begin on to all that, I'll just brief you about uh, myself. So I have got a very good introduction from Ranjita. Thanks for that. So guys, I'm an MTech graduate. I did my master's in software system from Bits Pilani. I'm having six years, of, six years of experience in application development and two years in full stack development. So in this, in my two years of React, yes, 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 answer. don't worry. We will be uh, starting from the beginning. Uh, Praku, if you're not able to hear, maybe some issue with your mic or your headphones or speakers, just try to reconnect. So now what is React uh, JS? So guys, uh, whenever we talk about uh, vanilla, okay, 
Abhishek, Abhishek, you can try to reconnect. It will help you. You know, it's uh, everyone is able to hear. So maybe you know some issue at your end. Now, when we talk about uh, React JS, so React is a library. We often, uh, we often, you know, we often get confused between a library and a framework. Uh, people recommend that you know to use Angular. There are many frameworks mm -hmm. available in the market, but to choose which one to go for is the power of a developer. Right. So why is React a developer's choice? Because it's a library. So what is a library? You know, think, think about a library as your as your college library. So you can go into a library and you can read any book you want. Similar is the case with React. React will give you the power to have whatever functions or features you want to choose. As a developer, it is your understanding and your level of knowledge to have or to use which feature you want. There is no hard code binding. There are no hard rules or coding rules like other frameworks. Okay. I feel many of you are, okay, sure. Now, it's a JS library. So how does a JS library, what is JS? Okay, how many of you are aware about the JavaScript or like how many of you use JavaScript at any point in time. Great, great. So most of you. So what is JavaScript? Okay, has anyone tried using any website in the world without JavaScript? Okay, that's great using for eight years. Okay, now just uh, a small uh, you know task for you. Open your favorite website, like say youtube.com or gmail.com. Open their website and turn off the JavaScript. You will find that the experience is so worse that you can you cannot even imagine using a website, right? So, the, so JavaScript is so popular because it's a client-side library or it's a client-side language. What do I mean by a client-side? A client-side is something, you know, okay. When I'm working on an application, so what I find that, you know, like uh, my, there are two ends, the server and the client. What is client? My computer, my Chrome is my client, right? Or my Firefox is my client. So when I use my client's processing power to render a system that is known as a client-side library. So React is a client-side library, yes, okay. So uh, can I jump into React directly? Sure, uh, we will be, uh, Shashi, your question is very good. Uh, you will be finding this answer in the middle of the session. Don't worry about it. Now, so React is, is built on the top of JavaScript. Let's see how, how will it work in the upcoming sessions. Now, why is React so popular? The popular, it's because it's not a framework. So Angular is a framework. Framework has rules which bind you. There are certain guidelines or certain rules which need to be followed. React is open, you know, you start, you make a component and it's over. You know, you can just continue working on it. Okay. Okay, now it's no, okay. Who owns uh, React or who, who who is working on the React? Anyone, guys? Anyone? Anyone? Facebook? Yes, right. Perfect. So Facebook was a company which was using React. So we'll be yes. Now there are a lot. Now there are there are a lot of things. So Facebook, Netflix, Uber, whatever whatever you find is actually using React. So the, now this gives another power to me. The power is that, so whatever React library I'm working on, it is being tested on the Facebook's official website. The Facebook has many apps, the Messenger app, the, uh, the ad manager, the ads app, the pages app. So first, whenever new feature comes in React, it is first beta tested. Post the beta testing, it, it moves to production in Facebook. Once it is thoroughly tested, find, running fine in production, then it is merged into the React library. So now you are not working on, on a thing which is your own. You are working on a framework which is already being tested by millions of users who are using the application day in and day, day out. That is the power. So as most of you are asking, React is yes, it is used to, uh, to power your front-end applications or the front-end of an application. Okay, guys, so we'll move further. Now, what is, so we know about MVC, right? So what is MVC? MVC stands for Model View Controller. 
so react forms the view layer of my application so the controller is in the back and model is something which is trying to hold my data guys any questions still here guys quickly now what is the difference between react web and react native so what is react native so whatever were the features available in react those features combined with the native part what do you mean by native native is like my applications or my os level framework these two combined together form my react native library now react native is used in a lot of things so from facebook application either it's a an android application or it's a ios application you can use it anywhere so the only difference between the react web and the react native is the way it is being used rest it is all common so once you are aware about react web you can very easily uh, switch to move or switch to work on your own react native so either one of you can work on and you are good to proceed further perfect perfect guys okay okay now moving ahead so what is this react magic so when i talk about react magic there are four magics in react the first is a virtual dom how many of you know what is a virtual dom guys how many of you know okay yes perfect so what is a virtual dom is so we know what is a dom right okay so when i have a page running right so the html part or the code which is executed in the browser is known as a virtual dom in that virtual dom when i try to change so how react works is react manages the dom on its own and it creates a virtual dom in its own library and tries to use it so we will just bring it in the further in the next slide don't worry about it now what is jsx it's a short form for javascript plus xml this is another way in which react makes the work easier for us next are components and the other another one are hooks so components and hooks form the basics of react and these are the main power or the features which enable react to be running on multiple systems at the same time so let's see what actually is a virtual dom so basically whenever i am working so the ui of my application is kept in the memory and whenever there is a change coming up oh wait i'll just show you an example over here now i have opened a very uh, site like this now if you guys see over here this is just a gif image don't confuse with the actual image now whenever this time is changing so irrespective of the fact that this needs not to be changed only the impacted element is changed so react maintains this whole dom and it finds the shortest element or the smallest change possible and changes that if you go to facebook.com you click on a like button so it will it will not refresh the whole page it will just refresh the place where the like button holds it will give you the power to control your dom in a magical manner are you good with this part guys okay perfect guys moving on next so this is my virtual dom this till now all the applications or javascript which were uh, which were manipulating my dom were actually going by the definition and changing the dom at every point in time here in react we were just going to change the uh, the virtual dom or the dom which is least impacted okay guys any doubts here guys any doubts yes yes so virtual dom and virtual dom and these are two different yes so basically okay i'll just uh, rephrase it so basically the whole page which is loading up is my dom so all the J js platforms or frameworks till now were refreshing the whole dom till now but what what react did was it it maintained the dom inside the memory using some data structure and a tree like structure was formed that tree like structure had roots and nodes the left node and the right node right and it found that which was the smallest node possible to change it took up that node changed the node and replaced with a new one saving the time to refresh or change or re uh, re retrieve or reset the whole dom is it clear guys now sakshi shrikant
Yeah. So yes, basically, yeah. So Pawan, how it works is that every in every JS uh, Ajax was working right. The only difference is the the way it works. How it works now? So the nuts that will be a, way, a bit of too out of the scope for this webinar right now. But what you can try to find is okay. I'll quickly uh, go to Google and just give me a second. Virtual DOM. So now imagine this is your DOM. So this is your whole page, right? Now I find that the application is to be changed here. So rather than changing the whole DOM, I'll just pick up this one, change this, and the work is done. The this is the basic, the the tiniest detail I can go forward. Though it works in a very different manner, so it maintains the tree structure in the node. It computes the difference and then gives me the output. Guys, I'm moving further because we have a lot to cover. Trust me. Now, so what is JSX? I was telling about the another feature. It stands for JavaScript plus XML. So how it works is, okay, let's first cover the example. Then we'll come to the definition. Imagine I have to create an element by the name of magic of React. So what I do is I say render, I say my element, and I say that where this element needs to be rendered. How this will work is, so in internally this is creating a React element which is of h1 tag and which is having these braces and this is the text so this element or this definition or this h this was the js part and if i use jsx it is understanding that this is an element this element needs to be created or h1 element needs to be created this is the text of the element and it needs to be appended so the code which was such a lengthy code which had a create element a append child or append element kind of thing is now replaced by a simple one word or by simple one thing which is my element so i'm creating my element i can name it as constant my element or say uh, x element or let's take it a head a head anything this variable is not to be confused with but as soon as i save this file as jsx the browser or the react compiler will understand hey, i need to change it and I need to create an element and add it over here as it is done without the JSX part. So both of these things are identical in nature, but JSX, so rather than having to call this method, it is saving the time and effort of a developer and easing this work. Guys, any questions still here, guys? Oh, so sorry. Okay. Okay, so Pragya, I'll just I'll just give you an example. So how it how it is working is it's very simple. Here I'm so till now, if you were working on, on a JS application, you had to say React dot create element. Now you you are creating an element. The element tag is H1. This will create a H1 tag, and the text will be without JSX. So you're calling this function. This function is taking three parameters and working on. But if you save this particular part of the code as JSX. And you give this as h1. So this h1 is this is automatically read as a HTML tag which will be created over here. Don't worry. Once we do the example, we'll be working on it. Uh, don't worry about it. It just uh, it's 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 a parameter which is being passed in the create element. So create element is 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 taking three uh, three parameters. The first one is the tag, and the last one is my this is my text or the or, or the element which is to me need to be passed. So this comes from my uh, vernacular or my vanilla JS. Don't worry, we will be covering everything in the live example, guys. We're just trying to cover the theory for the first few minutes. Okay, so the definition, what it says is JS is give developers power to write HTML in JavaScript. So rather than having you know to call the create element or append child every time, we are simply calling the attribute directly giving me the energy yeah okay so we've taken this example now we will move forward to the component so what is component the basic or the smallest single unit of an application can be taken as a component if if i take you an example in your facebook your like is a component your comment button is a component Every smallest individual element ever taken on a screen is a component in React. We take these things as 
you can take these things as a basic a basic element or a basic attribute which you need to pass now why are components so powerful for me these components are powerful because these give me the ability to modularize my code the code which i have written can be reused at multiple places or can be reused at multiple places like say for example this like button in facebook it is on a single page it is available at least 100 times right that is the power of the react components so now we can create component in two ways a class and a function so there's uh, there's some theory to it like uh, why should we use components what should be there in a component the component life cycle the state and the properties we are not covering that we are just covering the basics of components as of now now so you can have two ways of creating components the classes and the functions class components can help us to give more functionality why because they can help us to implement the life cycle methods also now let's see an example of how a component work imagine i am having a case that when if the if the the item shown on the screen is a car then load the car component if it's a truck load the truck component so irrespective of the fact what is showing up it the component is created and this whole can be this component can be used anywhere on the screen we don't need to worry about you know having created at multiple times or at multiple places so no necessary requirement for that guys any questions still here okay Yes, are we able, are we all connected? We are all able to hear. Here, we are all able to understand, right? Perfect. Thank you. So now, the next very important thing is the hooks. So what is the hook? You know, you would have seen. You know, as the word itself uh, specifies or declares, hooks are are the holders. Like uh, you know, uh, uh, when you go for fishing, you use a hook. So what is the hook? It's basically a binding element to which I bind a particular value. So basically, uh, imagine a case like say you need to understand what is the current location of the user. You need to understand what is the URL of the user, or you have called an API. You need to maintain the data in the API. How can you do it? All this can be done with the with the power of hooks. So basically, you can write. So basically, what you can do is you can have hooks created. These hooks can be you know created inside the class. So there are right now there are few seven or eight hooks. Uh, use state is a hook. Use location is a hook. Uh, use effect is a hook. There are many hooks available. But when we use these hooks, there are some rules to use it, right? So the very first thing is the hooks were came in the picture of React 16.8 version. So if your application is above this, then only you would be able to use hooks. Otherwise, it would give you an error. Now let's see the example. Okay. So there are rules. The okay, this is an example. So over here I have a use state hook. Now right now, in this hook I have created a hook for count and the value and the setter for a count. Now whenever I want to, you know, whenever I will call this count or whenever I'll click this button, this set count will be increased, and I can use this count anywhere inside my whole application. So rather than having to create a variable, pass the variable to the functions to get the value, I can simply create a use state hook and can bind it anywhere or everywhere I want. So it is giving me two functions: the count and the set count. Or like you can have it like a API result, set API result. You can have anything that you want. These count and set count are variables in respect to the example which I have taken below. Okay, guys, any questions till here? Yes, it's it's just a reference. Don't confuse it with a like as a rule. It's just a reference. Okay. Now you can try this example once you have the access to the uh, videos and PPTs. Now, many of you asked me in the very starting, is it necessary that I should understand npm or Node in order to learn React? Right? How many of you agree with this question? Okay. Guys, how many of you agree that is it important for us to know the basics of? Uh, okay, no, we don't. It's not mandatory for us to have npm or knowledge of Node or anything for that matter.
to understand the react that is the first thing i'll give you an example right now okay so what we will do is let's create a plain html and try to import these scripts and start working they can be continue with, with an example right so what i'll do is i'll fire up my visual code visual studio code okay over here it is okay here creating a new folder right now okay i'll drag and drop so this is my webinar okay i'm creating a new folder let's say an example okay, i'm loading this example folder over here okay add folder to the workspace so i have my example over here now in the example i am creating a new file let name is as index.html correct guys so the very first thing is my doc type html i hope everyone understands this now i will have my html tag up and running now post html i will have the head tag so in the head tag i'm using a meta it's not mandatory for you to use but yes if you want you can use it i'm saying that the cache set is utf8 now i'll say a title so i set the title as idionics react webinar now now i discussed about the cdns right okay how many of you want to know what are cdns i'll copy this script over here i'll copy this particular part of the code and i'll paste it over here so this is my script so cdn stands for content delivery network so when your application is sitting or when your content or your or your uh, files are loaded on the system so what you do is you load them on a central server and use them on as and when you want now i'll copy so these are the three libraries which we need i am copying it further this i'll be telling you how can you again or like how can you fetch the latest cdn when you are working on a real application so i have add another script okay now over here this is my babel script so now what is babel babel is a runtime environment uh, something as an advanced concept or just as an overview now once i have all these three things my head tag is closed so my react is actually loaded up now what i can do is i'll create a body tag Guys, I'm not taking your questions. Just uh, you can keep on typing. I will see them as and when I have time. Just give me a few minutes. So I take the ID as root. Now I told about the DOM manipulation, right? So this is my work. My work is done. I don't need to do anything over here. Yes. Okay. Now, what I do next over here is I'll say a script. I'll have a script tag. This will be a Babel script, right? So text. Now, in this script, I create a a small component. Let's say as a class application, I'm creating. I'm saying this extends React dot component. Now, once this is there. i simply say render inside the render i say okay i return the inside the h1 tag i return hello world the very basic example which we always start with okay now so this is my component my component is created what i do is i say react dom so i i have got the dom access on the dom access i am saying render now what i render is i have to render a component so i am rendering the app component and i am saying document here i need to pass the element to which i need to append the component i'll say root okay sorry 
over here. I am copying it over here and pasting it. Okay, perfect. So once this is done, so if you see that my HTML tag has no text or no property, nothing. But if this script will execute, it will show up in the root over here on the on the system. So let us try to run this on a server. So hello world, right? Now you might be confused that okay, I'm using a server. Let me simplify this for you even further. The file I created, I say open with Google Chrome. <clears throat> Over here, I will say inspect. So in the body, I have the root and this element is added. So this script is still there. This script ran and added the element over here. As you can find that there is nothing over here present inside the body. There's any question? So I think most of you would have got the point, right? Guys, are we good till here? Okay, now we'll move ahead further. All of you saw that, you know, they were discussing about CDNs, right? So I will say React CDN. Now, these are the CDN links of React. These keep on updating every now and then. So both React and uh, React DOM are available. So you can simply copy this and you can use it. Simple, nothing else needed. These will keep on changing. There's something as cross origin. This is uh, basically for your, uh, what you can say as, just to avoid your application being uh, this is a S, I'm not sure if how many of you are aware. Just to, you know, like when there are two domains working, so you have to allow your application to connect to other domains. This is the permission for that. But guys, are we good with this? Can we move ahead? Okay, so I've got your the one example ready. I'll share this example with you post the session. Now, you guys can try off what we did, you know, uh, the use state thing. You can try it over here, but that is post the session ends. Okay. Moving ahead, guys. I hope you guys are understanding and having fun, right? Now, this was the easiest way of doing it, right? What we did was we created, uh, we got the files and we started working on it. This is good for some people who are having very, you know, who are having a very legacy application and wish to use React. But if you are a new user and you don't want to get into the complexity of, you know, creating all of these things, so what you can do is. You can simply use this command, which is the npx create react app. Let me give you a demo or an example of this. The, the condition to use this application or this command is you should have on your system, you should have a node and react already installed. That is already installed on my system, so I'm not wasting time on it. Now what I'll do is I'll say cd documents. And over here was webinar cd react routing okay i will say ls okay so my things are ready so i will say npx create react app right so i'll just re-verify the command so this is npx create react app so whatever react i am creating so let's name it as hooks example Now this will take time. It will try to load everything which it has, the every system, the every file and the modules. I'll be discussing this with you in some time. Let this run in the background and we jump onto the PPT because we are very short of time. So create react app is an environment which is pre-configured and it consists of all the resources which are needed to build a react app. So what are resources? I need my servers, I need my execution commands, I need a lot, a lot of things to work on the live environment. So all those, these things are put together into one framework and available to you with just single command. Perfect guys, any, any question anyone has? Now, as soon as you run this command, there are a few folders which are executed and which end up coming up. Okay, like over here if you see, so this is just package.json over and over a time period of time, we'll find many folders coming over here. Let's see what are those folders one by one. The React application, hello world, which I did, will have the following thing. It will have a public folder, which will be my HTML files, my 
other files which are needed to run the application. Then it ha it has something as a source folder where I load all my JavaScripts and my package.json. So as the word is clear, package.json is your holder of the entire application. This will contain what needs to con you know what is the version. Okay. So npx is a so npm is a node package manager, right? So npx is a command. So npx comes as a part of React and npm is for anything. So what is node? Node is a package manager. So what, what is the package? And like you as the developer, you can have multiple things in, you know, multiple things like say, you can build your own library to call an API, a library to click a button. So you can create any library and push it to node, right? So you can fetch that from the NPM. So what NPM does is NPM gets that copy onto your system. Whereas NPX is a command which is specific to React. So this command is running on the top of node, but it is having its own structure. In the structure, it creates my whole project. So it creates my package, it creates the sources. It basically initializes the whole application which is to be executed. I think I have answered your question, Joan, right? Okay, guys. Now, we will come to this part later. Let's see what is the state of my application. Okay, so it says that the project is created. Okay, I'll quickly go. So node modules, the modules which are to be available in the application, right? So these are the modules which I can use in my current application. The linting, uh, any external library, everything comes over here inside this node modules. If you plan to change or if you plan to add another modules, you would need to add them over here in the node modules. Let me show you the React library which is which will be shown over here. The React DOM and the React, both of which will be a part and will be used. This is my source. This is my public. Now, what I'll do is, I would say, and I would say CD hook. So what it is saying is basically the project is created over here. I need to traverse inside the project and then move for move forward. I go inside the project and I say npm start. Okay, I missed the file. So basically, this, there are some pre-flight checks which happen, uh, just to make sure that you know that the uh, you know everything is in is in place. What I can do is in my environment, I can go and I can say skip the pre-flight checks, and then I'll run this command. Okay. So I've got my development server ready, up and running. Okay, let's see till where it is. Okay, this is still running. Guys, I hope all of you are clear, right? Any doubts anyone has till now? Guys, you can reply me in the chat. All of you are clear, right? So now, this is my structure. This is my server running localhost on 3000. You can change this port if you want. But you, know, you can just try, try a command, you can pass the port number, it will run on, on different server. Now the structure goes like this. So I have I've loaded my hooks example over here. So in my source, uh, this is my app.js. Now this is my the class and everything coming up. This is my, so whatever I want to use over here is available over here for me to use. Okay, so now moving ahead, if this is my package.json. So the hooks example, uh, the one I created and so whatever I, I have to, this is the command which will start my execution. This is how my build will start. This is how my testing will st uh, start and all these things. Guys, any doubt still here now? Guys, any doubt still here? Okay, so okay, uh, npx. Yes, npx is not deprecated in case of React. So, uh, so npm is deprecated. You can use continue using React. Okay. 
so as a as a web developer what are the scopes you need to cover or what are the you know uh, what are the scope as a developer so the scope is not limited to front end development uh, right now uh, you know with the options like say uh, we have many options like firebase which is which acts as a very good back end for me i don't need to worry about my front end or just worry about my front end so that is the power which will be available in my that is the power which is available inside my react application so as a as a developer for react you get multiple you get wider scope you get react web you get react native a mobile developer can be a web developer a web developer can be a mobile developer so all these things give the power to an organization to have a single resource rather than hiring multiple resource which is then eventually savings it does become difficult for a developer to have to juggle between multiple applications but at the same time from a organization perspective this is very cost saving and it's very you know it's an edge over other another is to a developer or a, you can master the mern stack which is a very famous stack available right now okay so doing this guys till now i hope you all are good you have no questions we will now move ahead with the uh, the to do list example which you were supposed to create i am giving you guys 2 minutes to ask any questions if you have then we will start with the to do list example okay sure swastik i'll quickly go there and move to it so this is my project the project is supposed to have a the project is supposed to have multiple folders this is my public folder the public is something which is exported out so everything is contained inside the source the source is where i define or where i code right so my app.js goes over here my index.js everything goes over here let me explain you the structure over here so i'll open up my index.js so in index.js i am trying to get the react dom and i'm trying to render something right okay i think this is not the correct one okay wait i copy i'll open this one directly this is my index.js over here this is my app what is app app is a component it is loading as a component this is my function and this is my functions export so this is how the structure follows so i have a app i traverse inside the app and i go to the app component but uh, this structure is something like the source is where my code resides and this source is then when i run the build is then pushed to a public folder the public folder has a index.html file which contains the root element now if you see over here in your index.js there was that try to append it to the root and it was appending to the root element in the index.html if you want to change it and give it a custom element you can change and do that you are free to do that right now so from here i have got my public so public is something which is deployed on the server this is my website this is my coding or my react uh, application react js application and this is my package.json so what is package or json this is the holder of the entire application which file to load first from where to start the building where to start the application all this comes inside the package or json and these are the modules so modules will be about will will contain information about all the components which this application is supposed to use has any question on this now i have tried to answer in enough detail okay so folder structure is there okay express is a js uh, framework mahida uh upon it, it it varies you know if you have just a simple function you can quickly go and use on the functional components uh, but if you have to use life cycle 
then you know you would need to move on and use the class based components uh css uh, you can follow a multiple structure like say over here you know you can keep it either in the source or you know like over here directly just doing but it but if you want to keep it separately you can have a css folder over here and once this is ported to public it will automatically maintain a css folder don't worry about that because we don't use css directly in my react like other things right so here this i give the path of where my css actually resides so if i change and if i give css it will be able to identify okay so i'll okay if time permits i'll try to answer your question about react router it's a it's a library which is it's, it's again a small uh, library which is trying to give me the ability to you know have multiple components or have the application change or route random uh, you know run timely or randomly rather than having to uh, change the whole application or, or the whole page okay so guys if i if you are good with this can we move ahead with the uh, to do example uh <clears throat> see if you uh, so like like every application css can work anywhere i would say you know if you have css specific to component it's better to have to give the css directly to the component rather than giving it in the separate file yes my dad that is true react might be uh, there are functions which might be deprecated but uh, if you are able to call an api in react in two lines uh, normal js will make you do it say in about 50 lines react is not uh, responsive guys okay guys let's try to do the to do example first and then take these questions like we have we have some time uh, remaining for this right don't worry about that so straight and props are something specific to something specific to you know the function so this is a very interesting interactive webinar we won't be able to cover it right now shrestha but yes we can help you with some resources for the same so now <clears throat> guys what we are going to do is we will first go to the mock api and register an account i already have a account with the mock api i'll quickly use that so this is my example this is how i have already an account created this is my api so you guys can go to this link and create an account if you want i'm pasting you the link in the chat window now as soon as i i copy this and i find it so now this is my api the api for to do items as i was telling you that we are discussing the to do items i have three items the first is attend the webinar second is learn react and the another one is a developer to do app the three lists for the today for the session for the today so we have to create an api so you can try to have this so you, this is a structure okay i will quickly show you the structure if you guys are interested in uh, understanding i just have an id and an item so you can you guys can go over here and create your own to do and own api for that matter so mock is something which is just trying to replicate a actual api behavior create a sample api this is my secret key i have got the secret key it's already there with me and i have to get started now now so what i what i will do is i will i will have to import the bootstrap uh, the question which pruin and everyone was asking but what i did was i did it in a smart manner so what i have done is in my html i have got my link to the bootstrap cdn directly rather than having to install it as of now and over here i have got my classes ready available right so don't worry about this code this code will be given to you so don't don't worry about it right now you should try to get the maximum you can right okay so i'll delete this delete this and i'll start with my code so guys are you ready, ready to get started with the code now
perfect guys perfect perfect okay so this is my hook example okay this is the project guys okay i'll create a so over here this is my source and over here first what i'll do is i'll create a new file i name this file as to do app.js now in this thing i would first need to start by importing the react so i'll say import react from react guys uh, this is a bit lengthy program so have patience try to follow and if you are stuck somewhere just let me know i'll try to help you the maximum i can i'll say import render from uh, react dom perfect now i am importing the library so axios is a library which i use to call the api now what i need to do is i need to create a title first of all right so uh i'll start with by saying so i'm creating a constant title so title is the title of my page so i am creating a title over here and inside the title i will say return and i will start my code so i'm creating a div and inside the div i'm okay let me create a h1 tag and inside the h1 tag i will say idionics webinar to do list now whatever the count i had over here i will use it directly perfect guys so this will be the title of my application or the title which will be shown to the user right don't confuse it with the application title or the browser title this is not something which will be shown over here just just to clarify now let us create a single to do item first so i create a constant to do item the to do item is all about this needs to have two things so first it will be a to do otherwise the user might want to remove it now once i say it's a to do uh, see now you have to understand that there could be multiple to dos right so i will have to have it for multiple events so multiple to dos can be loaded so what i say is i say a return now what are return i return so what i done is i have created to i am creating a to do as a href element or a href element right it is pointing to self and i am giving it a class as i'm giving this class the list do class so i've already take, i'm taking this from my bootstrap library if you guys remember now next is my on click function so the react has a on click function i'm trying to use the same function over here this is my over here so the function is accepting no parameters if in case the this item is clicked i would say remove whatever is the id of my to do so to do dot id okay okay this is a function this has to be a function so i'm this is a js of the react components i'm passing it like this and over here this is my h my a tag and in the name i need to show the element right so i say to do dot id So now, just to 
uh, set your reference. This was my item and this was my ID. The two attributes. This is my ID. This is my item. Correct, guys. Now, let us try to load all these multiple to dos into a single one by creating a, a list, right? So I'll say constant to do list. Okay, let's follow a normal convention of having this as, as a small one. Now, this will accept two things. The one is the to do. And second one would be the remove as usual. So I'll copy it from over here and will remove it. Now, this is a function, so I will have to give its body. So now think about this. So this is a JSON file, which has multiple elements, right? So I need to create now multiple nodes inside this file. So I'll say constant, let us create as a to-do node. So this is my to do. This will be this is coming from over here. Okay. So this is my single to do. These are multiple multiple to do's. I'm creating a map for this one. Now inside the map, I need to pass the single to do which is coming up. Now, as soon as I get the single element, I will now have to return the to do element which is to be shown on the screen. So what I'll do is I'll say to do to so this. I'm now from this, I'm calling my this small component. See very carefully how it is being binded. I told that this was a component being passed. So this comp or this function, uh, this parameter is coming up from here. There are multiple items in the list. This, th these multiple items are coming up from here and I'm trying to get it passed over here like this. Guys, any questions still here? I will have to pass the key just in order to be able to understand which one is deleted and which one is to be shown. So to do dot ID. Because I know that there will be an ID associated with it. A remove. And if it's a remove, this uh, the remove function will be guys so now this is my return element created now this will be called for all the map all the to do's in the list so if there are three this will be called thrice and will be shown on the screen now what i'm doing is i'm just trying to create the node for all of them so th this is one node and them and show on the screen as a single element right Guys, anyone having any questions till now? Okay. So now I have a div and in the div I'm giving a class name. Again, don't confuse this class name. This class name is coming from the bootstrap directly. I'll say style. Style is equal to, I'm passing a style on my own. I'm giving a margin from the top. This is just in case, you know, the people who were, who wanted to understand how, uh, how I need to pass the uh, components or, you know, how I need to pass the uh, CSS with the components. So over here like this, and this div is coming up. So whatever this node was there, I am trying to give it over here, everything. So see the link now. This title will be used somewhere later. Don't worry about it. I've created a to-do. To do is coming up inside my to do list, which is uh, which is calling this to do over here. If you see, it refers this one, the attributes being passed, and this node being created is called over here. That is correct. Now, these are the to do's which are already present. What about a to do which I need to create on my own or a input text field which i want to show to the user i am creating a to do form for that matter right a to do form uh, which will have an element as add to do 
okay now over here what i do is i am creating a input whatever is the text is basically an input right now see this text very carefully because this will be the jsx which i'll be using i'll say return so what i'm trying to return is a form a form element on submit so i'm calling the on submit in case of on submit the property which need to be linked with this one e is for error right this is a function i'm just calling prevent default right now and over here i'll say add to do this function i will need to create this function will actually add the to do list to do element to my list i will have to create this okay uh, create this now in this add one i would have so whatever i am getting in my input or my element i would have to assume that element and i am saying input dot value and passing this once i give the body to the function you will be able to understand how it is working and post this form is created okay i will have to set the value as zero like blank okay now i need to close the form and inside this form i would create the input text which i was talking about i will uh, ignore the class right now and over here i will give the node so i have got my input element being closed this is my this and post this i give a line break basically on submit whatever what happens is or on any form submit the page is to be loaded automatically just to ignore the refresh of the page i am calling the prevent default okay so i have got my return ended and my function ended over here guys any doubts still here now guys for all those who are new to react will find it a bit difficult to concentrate but bear with it it's not that difficult Okay, guys. So sorry. I think I got I got muted out of heart. I did it by mistake. Just uh, so sorry for that. So sorry for that. Okay. So guys, now can we move ahead? Okay. So few of you were asking for the overview of the code. I quickly overview give you the overview of the code. So now this is my this is this is my single to do item which is running up. Now this to do item is called inside a to do list, and this is my form by using which I will add my to do item to the list, right? now as soon as i'm trying to you know uh, add an element what happens is you know the element is will be happening on a form submit so that's why this is inside a form which is inside a input tag correct guys now i'll quickly go to creating a component okay so uh, mind this thing very carefully because now we are moving to the component so i'll say to do app extends react dot component now inside the component yes guys you will be getting the code and you will be getting the pbd don't worry about that now what i need to do in my component is this is i need to have a constructor first of all So, if a few of you were asking about the state and the props, 
So basically, all the properties which I need to pass, like say the the static properties or the one which I would be using in my application, can be passed inside the constructor. State is something you know of my application. I just uh, discuss this state also in a bit. So I am calling my super dot props just to set the application running from the parent or the React dot component. Initially, what I am doing is I am setting a state. So what is state? State is a data which my application can hold or will hold. Right now, I don't have any data. So I am setting it as blank. You guys can have bit. You can have a bit of data if you think of having it. Now I want. I know that my application will be having a URL which I would need to use. So I set it over here, and I'll get the URL from my application over here. Perfect, guys. Now here, so we have. This is my state which holds my data. My props are the attributes or the special uh, specialities of my application or the component which is being created. Now, as soon as I find that my component is be being mounted, I would call component did mount. Now, these are all lifecycle functions. You would need to have the knowledge of the lifecycle in order to understand that. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to get. What I'm getting, I'm getting this dot API URL. If it is able to get the API URL, I say then. Now, what would happen is once it gets the API URL, it will get some result. Now, the result may be an error. It may be a attribute. It may be an element, right? So over here in this one, I say this dot set state. So I had a set state method which is to set the data. So in this set state, I am passing the data. So whatever data, so what is data being passed? Data is what is I am getting from my result. This result attribute dot data. So whenever an API is called, the JSON is always inside the data. That's why I am doing it like this. Now, another is I created a function or a, you know which was to add a to do because which is to call the API. So the function was giving me a value if you guys remember value right? Let's name it as value. I create a constant. This constant is a to do. Just oh so sorry. Now, what is this? When I'm calling the API, I would have to pass this element, right? Item. In the item, I'm passing the value. Now, over here, right now, over here, I was calling the get. I, now, here, I'll call the post. So, what goes inside the post is my API URL and my to do or the value which was being passed. Now, once it passed, it gets a result in the See this thing very carefully. I had a state. Inside the state, I had the data, and inside the data, I have a push, which is the data which is coming up. Now I have got this over here. I pushed the application or the new thing which is coming up. So right now, I, over here, whatever element was being added, think of a, a to-do list, right? So what you what you what you do is, okay, I'll show you an example. Uh, I'll try to call open the webinar. Sorry, uh, what is the whiteboard? Over here, this is my whiteboard, and okay. Here we are. Oh, uh, yeah, perfect. Now I'll just show you what we are trying to design. So this is an application over here. Over here, it goes like this. This is where the user will enter text. This is where all the text will be shown. Once the user enters it, this needs to be added over here as well as on the JSON itself or the data itself. So I have added it. I have pushed it to my current state, and now I need to call the this dot set state. So 
in the this dot set state i am calling the data the data is not the this one but the which is inside this method this dot state okay guys are we clear till here i am closing this one and over here this is my event happening guys any doubts here anyone i would be more than happy to answer uh will mount is something when uh, when i feel that the application is about to mount this then i'll use it now once you've got this up and running what you guys can do is now let us try to get the remove function right so how do i handle the remove so i'll say handle now inside the remove i need to pass the id as well now when i have to have the you know like uh, the element which is to be removed i need to first get the element and let's do it like this so i create a constant or a variable let's say it as uh, remaining to do is equal to this dot state dot data dot i have a filter what is the filter filter is used to filter an element from a array so i will pass all the to dos which are inside this list which is being coming up and i will keep on adding this if this to do id is not equal to the one which i want if to do id is not equal to the id which is coming up in my remove function right guys if this doesn't happens i will say return to do because this is not to be removed otherwise this one will be removed now i will say axios dot delete so axios is a library which is actually helping me you know get the things done in a very easy manner so again this is my api dot api url i need to pass that which is the id which is to be deleted so plus this corresponding to the id once i get this i say again then in the then i pass the res and over here inside the res i now need to update my state so over here i enter this so this dot set state inside this dot set state I see every the I have got the elements which are to be added ready. Now I just need to render the my to do list. So how I render it? So I am rendering using JSX. Observe this very carefully. Inside the render, so all these are the functions which I am defining in my class. Inside the render function, I am calling the return, and inside the return, I will start with my div. i create a div so the very first thing i create is a title so what is the title now over here if you remember i had created a to do count so this was my title tag over here and this was my count which i was using so to do count and i can get it very easily by calling this dot state dot data dot length now till now what i have done is i have added all the elements which i want inside the title okay and this is my length so now this count will go over here and will be added to the title and this will go over here and will be shown like this guys are we good till here so i got my title ready now i need to create a to do form guys if you remember so in the to do form i need to call the i need to add or bind two things so the first is add to do right so where is my form so inside the form i am calling this parameter so add to do i am binding it to my current function 
So I call my current class object. So this dot the add to do function over here. This dot add to do dot bind. Now how I'm binding? I'm passing the this object or the current object. So I've got my form. I have got my title. Last thing is my to do list. So I got. I get my to do list. To do list is having two parameters. If I know not wrong, yeah, the to dos and the remove. So what is to dos? To dos is all the elements which I am trying to add. So which is nothing but this dot state dot data. And remove is something which is this dot handle remove. Now what is handle remove doing? This will be removing my, so when this remove is clicked, this remove comes over here and the element is removed. Now I'm again binding it to my current object and I'm closing this component. So there are three components which are being done over here. Yes, this will be exciting Shishi, no doubt about that. So now over here, I'll do this and Post everything is done, I will say export default. Kudu app. Okay. Now, one thing to observe here is very carefully that none of your methods should be not dark. Like, if, like, say, okay, I'll give you an example. Like, right now, you see that this is kind of lightened because this is not used anywhere. So if you find that all of your methods are available and being used, it is an understanding that your application is now ready to run. So I go to app.js, I go to my index.js and over here, I remove this app from the source. I'll copy this one and I'll say import, what was the name of my application? The to-do app. So to-do app from the to-do app. And this one is to be now imported and I need to add it over here. Perfect guys, any doubts anyone has still here till now? This is a default uh, convention, you can, you, you can remove this. This is just you know, like, uh, you can say it basically, it's, uh, so whenever elements are being created, just to avoid that they be overdone, we just uh, use this. So when we create a default app, it is coming up on its own. So you can ignore this part right now. And don't worry, it will it'll work without the strict mode also. Don't worry about that. Which will try to reconnect, I think. Guys, all of you are able to hear me, right? So I have my to-do app running. I have my index.js, everything is running fine. I'll now go to my hooks example in my terminal and would run it. So CD documents. I, I had a React project over here. I had something as hooks example, right? And I would say npm start. The project is starting. It will take a bit of time. Have patience for that, guys. Now, ideally, it should come up with the three apps, with the three to-dos which are shown over here. Let's see if it comes or not. So guys, adherence webinar, to do over here, the three to do's. If I click any one of this, this is removed. I can add because then we have attended it now. We are done, we are done all of three. I would say now, now let's ask, okay. Questions and answers from all of you. Enter this, now let's refresh the API. You would find that the items have been updated. Right, guys. So that was about the to-do list which we were discussing. Okay. Okay. So, guys, any questions still here now? Now, let's try to uh, practice something more. Like, let's try to add a B C D E F G. Now, if I remove the D one, let's see what happens. 
So it's still running fine. I'll try to refresh the page. It is still running fine. No, I have removed. I removed E or what? No, it's working right. It's not a RESTful API. It's a it's a mock API kind of thing. Right? But it's very useful when you are learning uh, JS. So it, the way it gives you the re response the API is it's perfectly fine. And you can create any number of endpoints over here. But this is not to be used in production, uh, my device. So guys, now don't worry about the code. Code will be given to you uh, once the session ends, like in, in a week or so, you will be, the team will be sharing it with you. So guys, if you're done with this, can we move on to the next thing, which are questions and questions and questions. So how many of you understand what we did? Okay, that's good, Linish. Okay, how many of you enjoyed what we did and would like to try this on your own? Okay. Yeah, so uh, Kaniraj, what you can do is if you find it confused, don't build the whole thing one by one. What you can do is like say, if, if, if I take our example way, over here, if you go, now don't try to build everything on the first go. Try to build only this component and try to add the elements or only the fetching component. What, what I had to do was, yes, Shashi, the, the, it was not supposed to be, uh, Everything in the first go, it was just an introduction demo. Uh, you, you can uh, tune in for more. The team will is, the team at Ionis is planning really good sessions. You can, you know, try to get this more. Yes, as and when you practice, you would try to, you know, be able to follow. It's nothing rocket science. It's very basic components, components, components that add up to uh, form larger component and larger DOM. That is all about the uh, React concepts. So guys, anyone is having any questions for me to answer, I'm really willing to have some good questions. It can be in specific to React, specific to a framework, specific to a career choice, specific to web development. I am fine with any Q&A you have. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, Hilton, uh, don't worry. The team would be uh, sharing you. So okay. Uh, okay. 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 I'll first start with the question from the starting when I was working in. Uh, so uh, Jan asked me about the strict mode. So what is strict mode is. Basically, a problem which could be there in an application. It's just trying to get all the warnings which could be uh, triggering it. Just for that, I have the strict mode. Okay. Okay. Next question is, uh, so Xfield is a library. Uh, so there are, uh, so like if you don't want some, uh, there are lineage, there are libraries for dizzy loading also. Like if you don't want to wait for the result. But our application was actually uh, waiting for the result. That's why I had to do it, right? You can try the HTTP library, I think. It's, 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 it's really good. So, Sreshta, if you want to learn about the RESTful APIs, uh, don't, uh, don't focus only on, the, uh, only on the API, right? If you want to learn React, focus on get any API and start working on it, right? But if you want to learn about RESTful APIs, you should try to uh, see the the basic concepts. The basic concepts are all about, you know, what are the APIs? What are the methods available in the APIs? How do I pass uh, text? Uh, what are, what is, how do I authorize or authenticate my API? Ashok, which development server you are talking about? Uh, like see, if you, uh, if Alan, if you are willing to have a uh, understanding in the terms of the scope, 
I would say React is better because of its ability to have web and native covered together. In that way, I would definitely recommend it. So, uh, Danish, uh, what is DOM? So, basically, when I'm having uh, when I'm having a uh, element or my screen running up, every page which is coming up is a DOM, right? So, DOM allows me to you know have applications or have things as a uh, in a single viewpoint. Right? It's document object model. Now, all my frameworks were actually giving or were actually, you know, trying to uh, say that, you know, were trying to refresh the DOM. But the way React manages the DOM, so what it does is it creates an in memory structure or in memory DS. The, that in memory DS is actually used uh, to, you know, to uh, help or to trigger an application or to trigger only the changes in the smallest part of the application. So that is what is virtual DOM. <laughs> For smaller applications, yes, I can say React is a really a good choice. Uh, so, uh, okay, React view versus Angular. I would say React followed by Angular followed by view. But uh, yes, but if you are talking about in terms of uh, mobile and mo mobile first, then I would say React, View, and then Angular. But I personally like React because you know it's very easy. The way components work is it's really good. Okay, uh, if you have multiple pages and if you want to redirect from one page to another, you have to use the React uh, router library. So the React router is. Uh, it's, it has multiple components, the router, the switch, so you can use all them, you know, uh, internally and will be able to change from one application of one page to another. So once you, what the error you are asking is basically it's, uh, so there's some element or some attribute which is missing. So there are some, you know, there are some, some ways to do it. Maybe, you know, like, uh, if you try to use the uh, React web debugger, it will be of uh, much help to you. Okay. No, no, Linux, you cannot use the same components uh, in, in all of your applications. You have to you have different components for React Native. No, uh, Cosmos, if you want to master, uh, master or if you want to be a web developer, uh, React is just fine. React with basics of Node is really good. Uh, Sheshna, if you ask about the shortcut of doing it, uh, then there is none. Maybe I would also need to find it, but I don't know because because the native has its own components. Like uh, in my in my form, so there are different components available for uh, both. So uh, Vine, for the certificate thing, Adrianus team will be able to help you. So guys, uh, that was all about me. Anything you have to add, I think we are done with the session. So I would ask the Adrianus team or whoever from, from the team to help you with the question on certificates. Uh, Ranjita, there are a few doubts on the frameworks question on certificates, if you can help those. Ujwal, any single page application is a, is a, is a really a go ahead for uh, React. Alan, there are multiple framework libraries available, uh, which you can use, so there's, there's no such issue like that. Yeah, Ranjita, over to you, I'm done. So uh, thanks guys, thanks a lot for joining in. Ranjita will take it over, and thanks for taking out this time, and thanks for listening. Uh, to me so patiently. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you so much for such a wonderful session. And I really hope that each and every participant had a great learning experience today. I really, uh, to, um, for you, Aditya, it was a really, really good session um, as of uh, what we have uh, experienced today. So and I hope the same for all the participants. Yes, and uh, just uh, one request for everyone, I am actually sharing a survey for, uh, form. I have actually shared a survey form. Uh, you just need to fill in uh, the form and share the details, uh, which will actually include your email ID. 
so uh, with the yeah, with the help of that email id we'll be able to share all the necessary uh, resource files then uh, the recorded session which you all have been requesting for that will be shared uh, on the registered email id registered email id as in the email id which you'll be providing us on the survey form i hope i am answering all the doubts that you had okay so yeah i request everyone to fill up the form and share it with us and uh, we'll be sharing all the uh, sharing the resource file and all other uh, uh, you know code files and uh, rec uh, session rec uh, the recorded session uh, within uh, one or two days uh, with all of you so um, yeah that's all actually from my end and from our, from the from our uh, Idionics end, and once again, I would like to thank Aditya for for the session, for such a wonderful session, and to all the participants for joining in and uh, ha and uh, having uh, and yeah, that's it, that's it. So yeah, have a nice uh, rest of the day to all of you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. I'll be just keeping uh, the session uh, for like uh, one uh, one or two minutes so that each and every one of you can uh, take a look at uh, the survey form and then I'll end the meeting for each and every one of you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.